Hi guys and welcome back to Michelle Gay Science Teacher Classroom. Today we're going to talk about the brain. We're going to talk about how the brain makes connections, how do we learn things, and the parts of the brain. Our brain weighs about three pounds. I wonder how many pounds does the brain of an elephant weigh? Can you make a guess? Think about that for a minute. We will also learn about the different parts of the brain and how those parts help us to move, to breathe, and to think, and to hold memories. Today, you will make a, a neuron showing all the parts of the neuron and how the neuron help us to think and learn things. Our brain, guys, is made up of 80% water and it is made up of 10% carbohydrates, proteins, and another 10% of fats. So our brain is unique and if we compare our brain to an animal, we will see different results. But we'll look at that at another class time. So let's look at the parts of the brain. Your brain has three major parts, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brain stem. The cerebrum is the largest part of your brain. It is the part of the brain that helps us think. It also controls your movement. It is what controls when you're playing the piano, singing a song. This is the part you use when you draw pictures, solve math problems, read. Any of these things, if whether you're playing sports, like football, soccer, baseball, you're using the cerebrum. The next part of your brain is the cerebellum. That's tucked right below the cerebrum. This is in control of balance and coordination. This is also important because it is what allows you to stand on one foot if you needed to, or if you're walking and you walk with balance. This part of the brain looks much smaller than the cerebrum. The brain stem. Oh, the brain stem is really important, guys. It's what tells your heart to beat, your lungs to breathe, and it is what controls your stomach to digest all that food and snacks you love to eat. You need your brain stem in order to stay alive. Can you imagine if you damaged your brain stem, what could happen? Think about that for a minute because your brain stem controls the automatic processes. Besides the three major parts of the brain, we want to talk about these neurons. Neurons have tiny fibers that grow off them called dendrites. These dendrites are important for your learning and remembering and storing new things. Your brain is made up of billions of tiny cells called neurons. The neurons are important because they can connect together and send messages all over your brain. Learning equals growing dendrites. If you want more dendrites so it can send signals all across your brain so you can learn more, then guess what? You have to start learning. When you learn something new, some of your neurons actually grow all these little stringy dendrites that you see right here. When you make connections in class or you make connections when you're learning something new, guess what? You're growing your dendrites and your neurons are actually making connections with other neurons. We're going to look at neurons and create our own neuron in the next part. Your brain has neurons and neurons have many parts that carry signals throughout our brain. And they carry the signals through electrical signals and chemical signals. If you look up here, 
Here you have the dendrites. The dendrites passes the information to the soma, which is this black part. Inside of the soma is where we have the nucleus. The nucleus and the soma begin to transmit messages along the axon. This axon is covered in white with the myelin sheath. That is a protective barrier for this nerve. Once it's carried through here, it goes through the synapses. And so these signals are carried through an electrical signal, but also a chemical signal because these synapses do not touch each other, nor the dendrites, but they're able to carry signals throughout different parts of the brain. And when these signals begin to come to each other, they make connections. When you make connections, you learn more. When you learn more, you become more intelligent and you remember things. So as you look at the neuron, think about every time you learn something new. The first time you try something, normally you don't get it the first time. What do you have to do in order to, to learn something and it becomes part of your memory? You have to practice. And as you practice, the signals begin to shoot through and continue to make connections from like if you can make a connection in reading, you can remember what you learned in reading and apply it to something else that you're learning. If you watch a video of someone playing ball and then you go out to play ball, you may remember what they did, but in order for you to learn it, you will have to practice. Today, we're going to be making neurons. You're going to be taking pipe cleaners and scissors and creating your own neurons. You're going to make your uh, soma, the nucleus. You're going to connect the dendrites. Remember with the dendrites, that's where you're learning things. You're going to create the axon in one color then cover it in this myelin sheath. Once you make those, you're going to add the synapse. All right, so let's get started as I walk you through making your own neuron. During this part, boys and girls, you will need to get different type colors of pipe cleaners. You're going to need a color for your dendrites, so you may need about three or four. You're going to need a color for your nucleus, so you'll need one. You'll need a color for your axon, which would be one. And you need a color for your myelin sheath, would this be one. Also, you need color for uh, a couple of uh, different colors for your synapses. All right, so let's get started. First, we're going to take one black pipe cleaner or whatever color you decide so that we can make the soma. I just took one pipe cleaner to make the soma. So just put it like this and twist. Then you want to twist it on this side and take this one and twist. So you just have like a two part. You could make it into four parts. You can be creative. If you have another way to create your Soma, that is fine. You need a shorter pipe cleaner, so you can just cut one in half. Take the colored pipe cleaner, which is going to be your nucleus. And you want to wrap it in the middle where it makes sort of like a little ball by the time you're through. OK, 
Okay, so that would be your nucleus. Next, you're going to create your dendrites. I decided I'm going to use pink for the dendrites. So for the dendrites, I'm just going to take my pipe cleaner, put it through, and give it a really good twist. Then I can shape and bend it the way that I want it to look. So you're going to take the rest of yours and make sure it's on there really well. And you can cut these in half to make some shorter. They don't have to be the same length. And that's the part for your dendrites. So go ahead and pause the video. and create your dendrites and if you haven't create your soma so you should have your dendrites placed on the soma and you have your nucleus now you're going to make your axon take one color take it on the end and twist it really well this is the axon where the messages Remember, the messages are coming from the dendrites to the soma, now to the axon. We want to protect the axon because it's a bundle of nerves and we don't want it to be destroyed. So we're going to cover it with a myelin sheath. So take another color, a different color, and carefully... wrap this around it doesn't have to be tight and you don't want to just twist them together you want to wrap it around it so you can tell it has that coating over it you can pause the video and continue to add this part. Now that we have our axon, we have the myelin sheath added on, now we're going to take this end and twist it tightly. You want to leave just a small you want to leave a small hole at the end for our next part. Now we're going to add our synapse end and we're going to take these and cut in half so we'll have four pieces. Take these, put in the middle, twist, bend them. So they kind of have like a little end, kind of bent at the end. Alright, you may continue to work on this part and pause your video. Alright, now you should be complete. You should have your dendrite or your neuron completed. You should have your dendrites. Then I want you to look at your soma then the nucleus, your axon that's covered in the myelin sheath, and this end with the synapse. What I would like for you to do next, at your table, one person will start and talk about the parts and talk about the signal where it starts at the dendrites, 
goes to the soma. The soma carries the message to the axon. The axon carries the message to the synapse. Once it goes there, it's going to go to the next neuron, which will be the next person. And you will begin to explain. And then it will go to the next neuron. And then the third person will explain. Let's get started. Now that you have completed this activity, so actually, how does this work? Well, your brain receives messages all the time through your five senses. Whether it's your sight, your hearing, your taste, your smell, those messages from the outside world are sent to your brain. And those messages travel along all your neurons. Remember I said there is about a billion neurons. And so these messages travel along the way sending signals to and from the brain. And it tells your body what to do, how to move, how to think, what's in your memory. And when you remember from one thing to the other, that's because of all the signals that are traveling along your nerve. Now that you know a little bit more about how your brain works, what are you going to do to continue to improve your brain? Let me know by putting it on a sticky note and putting it on the brain in the back of the classroom. Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this lesson today and I hope you're looking forward to our next part on the brain. See you next time. Thank you.